Okay, this one is going to be the Triple D, which is a lot easier than saying the tongue-tied version of Darling, Darting Damsel, DDD. Um, you'll you'll want to have damsels in your um, box. I, I know I always do, because we have quite a few damsels that will come off. A damsel is kind of like what I used to call a dragonfly. Uh, except the wings go straight down the back um, rather than poking out per perpendicular from the sides of the abdomen. And this is going to be sort of a complicated upside down pattern, um, but if you take your time with it, um, you'll be rewarded. So I'm going to, because this is kind of an inverted pattern, I'm going to put the eyes underneath here. And I've just got a couple of chain, um, pieces of chain. Um, I want to be super secret about it, but I kind of stole it off the light fixture here in my... I thought I had some of these, and then I couldn't find any. So I'm just going to tie some figure eights through those two. And that's just going to help us get those kind of solidified in place exactly where we want them. Once I've got a few wraps through that, I'm going to go ahead and grab some um, super glue, Z-Mint, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put just a tiny bit right in the center on those thread wraps. i put it back away again before I spill it. And with the glue in place, I'm going to take a few more wraps right through the middle of that material here. So you can see we're building a really nice set of eyes and the eyes are pretty pronounced on a damselfly nymph so this is actually working out just just wonderfully. Once I've got those kind of tied in um, because I did harvest them off of my own light fixture I actually want these to be black so I'm going to grab a black sharpie and we're just going to do some coloring. So whoever said tying flies couldn't be as fun as coloring. So after doing a little bit of coloring, my eyes should be pretty firm in place at this point. And by coloring them in black, they're not, they're still pronounced, but not quite as outstanding as they were when they were silver. So we're just going to turn this right side up for a minute, or upside down, since this is an inverted fly. We're going to take our thread down around the bend of the hook here. This is a size 10, um, so it's actually a fairly good sized um, hook that we're tying with here. Next I'm going to turn to some um, ostrich hurl. This is dyed olive. So I've pulled off three strands, and I've worked on kind of aligning the tips of those strands. Those are going to be our tails. And so I'm going to look for a measure. I want those tails to be relatively long. Remembering I'm going around the back end of the hook here as well. I'm just going to take a wrap or two to secure these to the top of the hook. And these things will get a little bit out of control on you, but that's okay. So I've got those in place a bit longer than I want, so I'm going to go ahead and pull to shorten them a little bit. And I think that's going to do us just fine right there. So from here, I'm going to actually go and recapture. Fortunately, this stuff compresses very, very well. So I'm going to recapture this and bring it all the way back down to where those tails are. Next, I'm going to go with some olive V-rib, a little stretchy material. I'm going to go ahead and light this guy up a little bit because I want to kind of pull on the back end of this just to make it a little bit flatter. You can see it's going to turn into a little bit of a shepherd's crook. So now that I've done just a little bit of melting on this V-rib, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to try to catch this close to the very back here. And 
I'm using, I think I mentioned already, Nano Silk, which allows me to kind of crank down on this a little bit, um, just so I can get it nice and tight in place there. I'm just going to come back down over the top of it to compress it as much as I can, knowing that I'm going to have a little bit of a bump right here. So we're going to work on a little bit of tapering right there. It's skinnier. I'm going to give it this material a little bit more of a stretch. Um, find your happy balance. Because you certainly can pull this hard enough that it's going to break on you. Um, but you have to pr pull pretty hard for that to happen. So by pulling on this, what we're going to end up with is hopefully larger segmentations as we move up. So as I move up towards the eyes, I'm going to relax some of that stretch. And that's going to result in sections that stand out a little bit more than the sec sections at the back and gives us that nice tapered look that we're going for here. Once I've got that V-rib up behind the eye and move my peacock curls out of the way, I'll give it another good stretch so that I can tie this material off nice and close. Right behind the eyes there that we, we've put in place. And with that secured, I'm now just going to go ahead and turn my vise upside down or right side up in this particular case um, because this is an inverted fly. I'm just going to cut that V-rib off nice and close. With that done, because I'm using white thread, I can travel right back down without making too much of a issue or problem. Um, some folks will just tie this in with two um, bobbins or two, yeah, bobbins. I, I prefer to do it this way, but now I'm going to separate my three tails so I can see which one is going where. And what I'm going to do is going through these segments I'm going to take one hurl up one side of the, the hook, and I'm going to take another hurl up the lens side of the hook. So this is a little bit tricky, but not that difficult if you just give it a little bit of time. So I'll just keep working my way up the hook here, alternating these two pieces of peacock curl, and trying to get them tied right into those segments right along the side of the hook here. We're going to just continue that up until we get keeping those on the sides until we get right up behind the eyes. And they will break off on you, so be careful. That one just happened to pick the absolute best time to possibly break off. So we're just left with this one. Should be two, but hey, we broke one off. We're efficient. Um, once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and come in and I'm going to clip that peacock curl off nice and close. And then I'm going to come back to this one in the very back, and we don't need it. We didn't need it to go up the back. We needed it for the three tails, so we're going to go ahead and clip him off as well. Resituate our eyes a little bit. Take a look at where we are. I'm pretty happy with where we are right there. And I'm going to come back down part of the abdomen with my thread. And I will crank on this kind of hard just to get it sunk into that D-rib nice and tight. So from here I've got a, a little piece of Swiss straw. Um, it's dyed olive so it's going to go in perfectly here. It's going to be our wing case. And the unusual piece of this is this wing case is going to go 
underneath because this is inverted fly. So my first step is just to get this stuff secured down um, under there. And once you have that kind of secured down, we're just going to wrap back over the top of it a little bit to get us back to where we want the thorax on the pattern to start. And once I've got it that far, I can go ahead and come in with my scissors and we'll just trim out the extra of this Swiss straw. So from here, we're going to create a, just a dubbing loop. I'm just going to use a little dubbing hook here. I always like to take a couple of wraps around the base. Then I can kind of bring my thread back to where I want this thorax to start. And that's where my dubbing loop is going to be. And then I can just move my thread back up to that position right behind these eyes. And so what I've done next is I've grabbed a, a hair's mask, dyed olive. And I'm really going after the guard hairs here. Um, I'll get some of the fuzzy bits, but it's really the guard hairs we're after here. I'm going to open up that dubbing loop and I'm going to sit that fur right into that dubbing loop here. So once I've got that done, I'm just going to just go ahead and spin this. I've got quite a bit of extra there on the end. Um, we'll pick some of that out. But by spinning this, you can see we're getting a nice spiky um, piece of thread here, or dubbing loop. So now I'm going to come in and kind of pull out a few of those extra long pieces. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this right up the abdomen here. I might take my fingers and preen some of those fibers back just a hair. Pardon the pun. Yeah, this is a hair's mask. Once I've got that right up behind the eyes, we're going to go ahead and take our thread over the top of it to kind of lock that in place. I'll take a couple of those figure eight wraps through here just to make absolutely sure. And I'm just going to come in with my scissors and we'll cut this dubbing loop off nice and close. So our very final step is we're going to go ahead and pull this wing case over that we've put on the belly. down nice and tight. Take a few wraps on the other side of it as well. From there I can go on in and we'll just trim that out. And then we're free to kind of come in with our whip finisher. Again, this is where you see the hook sitting right now is about how we want this to be in the water. So it is going to be inverted just like that. Um, we're going to put some UV resin on that wing case. So that's going to make these wraps pretty bulletproof. So I'm not too worried about putting a thousand wraps on here. Turn that back around, find the bottom. We'll go ahead and cut our thread off at this point. So as I'm putting the resin on here, I want to try as carefully as I can to avoid those guard hairs. So I'm going to go ahead. This is just a medium viscosity. We're just going to let that kind of run down. Get some right in between. We'll cure that resin and we will be done. This is just a wonderful um, damselfly pattern. And when damsels are coming off, um, I can do pretty well with a dry uh, fly damsel, but the the nymphs, um, these are just absolutely amazing, and they'll you'll knock them dead with this. 
um, every time. It's got the classic look of the damsel nymph with the bulging eyes, and we've added kind of the upside down trajectory of how we want to float this one. Um, great pattern, give it a shot. Mm -hmm. 